Hello, this is Josh with Programmable Audio. This is going to be my first tutorial in a series of tutorials trying to kind of find my voice here for running and making tutorials. Um, this one in particular is going to focus around this controller here. It's a Behringer Touch TC64. It's a launch pad knockoff controller uh, designed to work with Ableton, as you can see. Uh, on my screen I don't use Ableton, I use Reaper, however Reaper doesn't interface as well with this device as uh, Ableton would. So over the next several tutorials I'm going to work on getting this connected, giving you a kind of a rundown on how to use it, um, connecting it to a sampler and some samples, and making it at least behave more like a drum pad controller uh, tied to a drum rack. So anyway, let's get started. We've got uh, the controller here. You want to have it plugged in, uh, USB, and recognized by your computer. Um, you can see it's not doing anything. Um, it is on. First thing you want to do is you want to come into Reaper, go to your options, check your preferences, go to your MIDI devices here. It's going to show up as the Launchpad S in both the MIDI input and the MIDI output. Make sure that they're enabled in both. So you right click enable, double click enable. Uh, make sure you do the same on the output. Now a lot of your devices you're not going to want to do an output on this one you do and I'll show you why right now. So we're going to put a new instrument in and what I have found is that uh, the default noise is too loud um, off the bat, so you want to set it to about negative 30 while you're recording. You can see, got a kick, but there's no response from the controller. That's where the um, output comes in. You go to the routing for your track here. You're going to do the MIDI hardware output and tell it to go to the Launchpad S, and right away you can see that uh, you've got some feedback from the controller when you push a button. Uh, the controller itself has three uh, LED, RGB, whatever, um, yellow, red, and green. Gives you a range of colors. If you want to set that, you can come into your FX and you can add that's the JS MIDI velocity control. If you set your min velocity all the way to the top, and then mess with the max velocity, you'll see that depending on where you are, you kind of get some different colors. And that's based on those three uh, LEDs kind of mixing based on the velocity. I mean, that's, a, that's about as much as I've been able to get Reaper to do with it uh, for now. So as you can see, it's pretty straightforward. Um, get it plugged in, get it going, get it responding with some visual feedback. Uh, the one piece that I kind of glossed over here, and I'll show you really quickly in case you don't know this already, uh, when you're working in Reaper, um, all of the track types, you can put anything you want on a MIDI, sound, etc. Um, if you're new to this, uh, adding a MIDI controller when I first started was a five-step process. Um, got some really good advice online. You come in here and insert virtual instrument on track, and then you can choose your instrument. I, like I said, I'd done that kick. Um, that sets everything you need. Um, it sets your uh, input to MIDI all channels. It sets it ready to monitor. And then as soon as you arm it for recording, it, it takes the MIDI input, it, it plays. So basic of getting this controller in Reaper set up and working. Uh, in the next one I will show you guys how to tie this to a bank of resamplomatics or other sampler of your choice. Um, I'll be using the Reaper stock, stock plugins when and where I can. Um, so stay tuned, uh, take a look, F follow me along with this if you want to see how this works. Um, so this is my first one. Feel free to, in the comments, leave me suggestions on how to improve voice, technique, uh, how to make these more interesting. Um, let me know. Thanks. I hope you learned something, and uh, we'll see you next time.